Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm just going to show you how to draw Thanos, or at least his head. So I'm using Photoshop, but you can follow along in any program, or even just with pencil and paper. So I'm starting with just a circle. Uh, you can see I had to redraw this a few times. So this is almost like the Andrew Loomis method. I've drawn a line right through the middle of the circle, just so I've got a centre line. I've drawn another line uh, horizontally through that. Then I'm going to cut off a small section on either side of that circle. Towards the bottom of the circle I'm going to put a faint line which is going to be the centre of his mouth and I'm going to actually draw in a little mark for his mouth. About a third of the way between the mouth line and the eyebrow line I'm going to put in some marks at an equal distance either side of the centre line and I'm going to start to draw in his nose. Now we can refine this as we go. Um, I'm sticking in some crease lines above those as well and I'm also sticking in some more marks where I'm going to want the eyes to go. So these are the distance of the nose apart, and each eye is the same width as the width of the nose. And within those construction lines that we've just done, I'm going to mark almost like a little pyramid or triangle shape for the top of the eye, and just another small mark below that for the bottom of the eye. I do tweak these a little bit later on. I'm also going to put in roughly where his eyebrows would be along that line. Next I'm going to put in a little mark for where I want the chin to go. I would say from the chin to the lips, it's about double the distance as the nose to the lips. So we've got the filtrum, I think it's called, just below the nose. It sort of joins into these lips. Now, it actually kind of looks like he's got quite feminine lips when you draw it at this stage. It changes a little bit when we shade it though. And where his lip dips down on one side, he has a crease above that. Whereas on the other side, where his lip comes upwards, the crease goes down. And then put in the bottom lip. You can see it's not perfectly symmetrical because of the facial expression he's pulling. I'm going to mark in a little shape below the mouth. This is going to help me with the shading later on. And also gives us a bit of an indication where the chin's going to be. You can see I've also drawn in some construction marks pretty much from the edge of the mouth down. Just so that I can get his chin nice and straight because it does dip in a little bit in the centre. And that's going to curve upwards as it comes to the side of the face. We're not going to go too far with that yet because we are going to put a helmet over those bits anyway. And I'm actually going to start marking in the helmet now. So between his eyes he's got a bit of a curve, which then comes up on either side, and then there's going to be a straighter line, a harder edge, over where we've marked his eyebrows. From there we just need to curve that round, almost like it's curving round to his nose, but not going quite as far as that. The hardest bit here is usually getting something that looks symmetrical on the other side. And once we've got those in, we're then going to draw a line coming downwards, but also slightly towards his chin. And then we're going to curve that back up as it comes around the outside of his head. And then join that up around the top of his head. I'm adding in some nostrils here. He is sort of flaring his nose a little bit with this expression. And add in a little groove where it almost looks like it's joining his nostrils together. Add in a little bit of shading as well to the nostrils, but we'll do some shading at the end. And very quickly, I'm just going to erase some of these construction lines that I don't need so much anymore. Because I'm working digitally, I could have just drawn this on a separate layer, but I didn't mind just erasing them anyway. Next, we're drawing in these crease lines from the edge of his nostrils that just come to the outside of his mouth. So you can see the face is starting to look a bit more defined. Marking an iris here in the centre of his eye, so just a circle for this, but obviously the eyelid is going to cut off the top and bottom of this. And then we're just adding a little bit more to this eyelid and refining these as we go. I do have a reference image loaded up for this, so if you type Thanos into Google that will also help having an image. Uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to just do it off the top of your head. Putting a small circle to one side within his eye and this is just going to be left for a highlight. And then I'm drawing in a little circle again in the centre of the eye and darkening this. This is just going to be his pupil. Again just refining the eye shape a little bit as I go and also refining the mouth, just darkening that centre line, uh, making it look a little bit more 3D, giving it a bit of occlusion shadow. So we have been working quite light at this point, just makes it easier if you've made any mistakes, you've not committed to them. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually just putting in some faint marks of almost like where his cheekbone would be, and these will help guide us when it comes to drawing in other features, and also when it comes to the shading. And I'm adding some more crease lines just around his chin here, at least I think the crease lines, it was quite difficult to tell from the image I used. And now we're going to start putting in some detail. So starting with a line down the centre of his face, uh, we're going to go from the bottom of his lip first. I'm going to draw this straight down. And as we go along the lip, I'm just going to create more of these lines that actually follow the shape of the face. So that's the shape of the lips and the shape of the chin. And this just makes it look quite 3D. 
And then once we've done that on one side, I'm going to draw this above the lip as well. So following the same kind of principles, we're just going to follow the shape of his face. And you'll see those marks are put into the cheek. I'm actually following the cheek definition with these lines. So these are almost like indentations in his face, I think. I'm not sure the reasoning behind that, but it's pretty cool. Obviously do that on both sides, defining his cheeks a little bit more there. And again, more lines here. I, I think these were crease lines or scars, or they were maybe the patterning on his face. But I am following reference. So zooming in on his chin here, I just wanted to show adding a little bit more detail and giving the edge of his face more shape. So each of these indentations is going to be a groove that comes out and in on the, each edge. And this does make it look more like an indentation. Moving back to his eyes, we're going to start adding more definition here for sort of wrinkles and crease lines. So at the edge of his eye, um, almost like bags below his eyes, and even some crease marks on his nose to make it look a bit more like he's flaring his nose and pulling a little bit of a face. Here what I'm doing is just starting to define the helmet a little bit more. I didn't want to go too detailed with the helmet so I do simplify it a little bit otherwise this video would have been really long. So I'm starting above his nose trying to keep it fairly symmetrical and we're drawing almost like a diamond shape with another shape coming out the top of that. So we're adding some indentations and some grooves into his helmet and on the edging of his helmet He's got this thicker bit. Sorry, I don't know the technical names for these kind of bits, but it adds a pretty cool pattern into it. So I'm adding those on and also thickening the bit towards his nose and refining it a little bit as I go. Because the further you get, the more you start noticing little mistakes. So I'm just erasing them slightly and redrawing them. And we're actually going to curve this thicker bit round his helmet towards the center line as we get nearer the top. Again, the hardest bit here is usually getting it quite symmetrical, something I definitely struggled with. But this is only a sketch. And adding a little bit to the centre line, including a little spiky bit on top, which just gives the impression that it's more 3D and that it's standing out above the helmet and it's thicker and it's on top of the helmet almost. Giving it a little bit more edge into the helmet here. This again is making it less 2D, we're making it a little bit more 3D because you can see a different plane of the helmet here. It's just a very thin strip and do that on both sides. And because of the shape of the helmet and the angle we're seeing it at, we can see a little bit of this edging from the front on both sides. And I'm also following it out around the helmet a little bit. Now again, I am simplifying this design quite a lot because it actually looked quite detailed. And with this only being a sketch, I didn't want to go over the top and spend forever on it. This part of the helmet was actually quite difficult because it was quite difficult to judge what was happening in it um, from the image I was using. But it was almost like another edge piece and and another piece that was sort of wrapping around that at the top. I really struggled getting the symmetry on this one, so I actually neatened this a little bit off camera. Just to save you guys sitting and watching me for hours whilst I did attempt that. And you can see we're almost finished, so I'm just looking at my reference image here. and trying to find any details that I'm missing. In this case, I'm just adding a few more indentations into the helmet. And more of the patterning to the edging on both sides. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the head at this point. So I'm just gonna very roughly draw in a little bit of his sort of upper body, some of his neck and shoulders. I'm not going into much detail at all here, but it still adds quite a bit to the piece. A head on its own usually looks a little bit out of place. So adding some shoulders and a neck can look pretty cool. Not that you can actually see his neck because you know, his head's so big, but we'll try anyway. And he has absolutely enormous shoulder pads. So the image ended up a lot wider than I was expecting. And again, I didn't really draw this bit exact, I just sort of simplified it. So it's looking pretty much finished now, so just add in any sort of final details, anything you think that you've missed. And now we're on to my favourite bit, just a little bit of shading, quite simple shading, but it's really going to make it pop. So our lighting is coming from the front in this case, even a little bit above him. So the top of his lip is going to be in shadow, and these crease lines on either side are also going to have a little bit of shade into them. And all this area that I marked below his lip earlier on, because of the angle of the plane compared to the light is also going to be in shade. And you'll notice that I left his bottom lip without shading it because the light would be hitting this plane. So it helps to have a basic understanding of lighting. But if you're using good reference, you should be able to see anyway. And I'm adding some into that groove below the nose where the lighting would struggle to get to. And towards the bottom of the chin, where the chin is curving below his face, I've actually marked it in first with some lines to show where it's going to go. And then I've just drawn it in. I've actually gone a little bit too close to the edge here. So once I've done that, I actually went over it again, starting a little bit higher up this time until I was happy with it. 
marking on a bit on the bottom section of his nose where it's turning away from the light as well as defining the nostrils a little bit where the light would struggle to get to. Same principles with these crease lines on the side of his cheek. And start shading lightly first and you can always darken the areas up afterwards. Going back to those faint marks we made earlier for the sort of the cheekbones, I'm now using them as reference to actually start adding shading to where his cheeks actually start to curve and also towards the edge of his helmet, where less light is going to be able to get. So do that on either side. And below his eyes, we don't want to make it look like he's got huge bags or anything, but they are turning away from the light, so they are going to be in shade. And it is starting to make the image look a lot more 3D, it's starting to pop a lot more. And next we're going to have quite a big blocked out area that is in shade, and this is going to be almost like cast shadow from the top of his helmet, and because his eyes are obviously set quite far back within his skull as well, so I've marked it with a line first and then I've just filled in this whole area. It almost looks like some sort of visor. And you'll notice I am shading his actual eyes as well. I'm keeping it relatively light on the white of his eye, but it's not going to be perfectly white. And I'm starting to darken the iris as well here, just to give it some value. Erasing where the highlight is, just because I want to make it really pop, a highlight really adds a lot to the image uh, within his eye. It gives it more of a glossy feel as well. I'm refining the nose a little bit more. And then I'm going in right towards the edges of the helmet and I'm darkening it bit by bit. Again, just where the lighting wouldn't get to as easily. Below his chin, there's going to be barely any light, especially since he's got an absolutely massive chin. So it's going to be nice and dark below this area. And this starts to define the bottom of his chin more and also the shoulders. And then I'm going to move to the helmet. Now, I am adding shading to this, but I'm also using this just to add some basic values to the helmet trying to keep it a little bit lighter where it looks sort of metallic and shiny and then trying to darken the areas that are a little bit more indented. I'm going to leave those edging detailed bits um, just to give them a little bit of contrast because I thought it looked pretty cool. And as I'm shading this, I'm also going over the edge a little bit more and just thickening that line. That's a bit of personal preference though, just because I like the look of it with a sort of thick outline. And then moving on, we're just going to add some really basic shading just to his body. And that's him done. And this one took me roughly about two hours because I am quite slow at sketching, but I was actually really pleased with the way this turned out. And I showed this to a few of my friends and they did say he looks a little bit too friendly in my version. Um, so this is more of a happy Thanos, apparently. I did draw him a little bit too wide. So for this final image here, I've just squashed him inwards a little bit to make him look a little bit more like the reference I used, which is the movie version of Thanos. But yeah, that's it. That's him finished. Let me know if you guys want to see more tutorials like this. And please do subscribe to show your support. Leave a comment below, like the video. Thanks so much, guys.